Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, can one of us please lead us in prayer? Kennedy, can you lead us in prayer, please? Okay. Uh, Rose, can you lead us in prayer? Yeah, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Father in heaven, all glory, praise, and honor to you. We thank you for another space in time when we can learn more about you. Father, help us settle in this moment so we may receive what you have real to reveal to us. Father, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Let them become fertile soil so your word might produce fruit after hearing your word. Let them take root in our hearts, Lord. We commit this hour to you, Father. We commit our teacher, Pastor Paul Emmanuel, to you. Father, supply the right words through his mouth. Supply your wisdom through him. Father, thank you most of all for having us group again from all far corners of the world to hear more about you. In this season of your teaching, help us to grow more in holiness, in godly wisdom, and godly character. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rose. All right. Uh, so before we go ahead, uh, let's do a quick review of what we did last week. Last week was uh, very interesting where we looked at what a manifestation of God's glory looks like. Right, And we picked up from Exodus 33, the whole encounter where uh, Moses goes up to the mountain and meets with God. And they have this wonderful experience of the glory of God. And so we also looked at what happens, you know, in the expressions of God's glory. We saw that uh, God told Moses, my goodness shall pass by. You shall not see my face, but... I will put you in the cleft and my goodness shall uh, pass by. So the, one of the expressions of the glory of God is his goodness. And then he says, I will bring my, uh, he brings revelation to us. So uh, the glory of God brings revelation into our spirit. There's, it, it brings grace. It brings compassion. Uh, he, he, the glory of God sometimes, you know, we studied about this as well, sometimes reveals and sometimes conceals, right? So we may not know all the answers to all the things that we are praying for. Uh, we may not know when revival is going to happen. We do not know how it's going to happen, who God is going to use. Uh, but we are sure of this, that God is a promise-keeping God. If he has said, uh, you know, that he will pour out his spirit, then he will do that. So this is what we looked at last week, and uh, uh, it was a powerful encounter. There's so much that we can learn. Uh, we also looked at different varies uh, of gl God's glory, uh, where, you know, for example, uh, God revealed his glory to Moses, uh, and then Joshua was there, uh, and jo he did not reveal his, you know, the entire thing, what he revealed to Moses. He didn't reveal the whole uh, glory to Joshua. But the same Moses who went down, the Israelites said, cover your face for we can't see your face. So uh, we see varied expressions of God's glory. And another important thing we learned is that, you know, when we are pursuing God, when we are uh, calling upon the Lord and his glory, his presence comes upon us, the Lord God, he supplies or he shows himself in accordance to our capacity. Right. So he knew that Moses would be able to take this, uh, this what I show him, uh, but he didn't let Joshua see some of it. And But then he revealed himself even to Joshua, but he didn't let the other Israelites see. So we, we see that God responded in different ways. His glory was revealed in different measures to different people. Right. So it's basically, we can conclude to say that the more we are intimate with God, the more our, we are you know, uh, our hearts are turned towards him, we are pursuing him, the more we will see the glory of God in our lives, right? Uh, 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 for example, Moses, even before he was, you know, uh, even before he was going to die, uh, one of his requests was, Lord, I want to see more of your glory. I want to see you more. Uh, 
the king david also he says god i, I want I, i want to know you more uh, apostle paul he says i'm pressing on uh, because the love of christ constraineth me and and so we see how uh, god you know uh, responds to these hungry hearts and even as we are hungry and praying to god remember that god will pour out his glory so we'll pick up from page 91 understanding the manifestations of his presence now we uh, may have learned some of this in the class of uh, the holy spirit class but we will just go ahead the, go ahead with this just to refresh our memories now we know that the holy spirit uh, comes in different manifestations right there's different manifestations so let's look at a few of them his presence is like a burning sh- is like fire burning up the shaft and destroying the works of darkness now we always say that right holy the fire of the holy spirit right it's one of his uh, characteristics right uh there will be times when you know uh, maybe we are praying for somebody or we may have experienced it too where uh, suddenly we may feel like uh you know a body is on fire you know it, it, or parts of our body is on fire uh, it is the work of the holy spirit it's a manifestation of his presence right uh, his his presence is like fire two his presence is like light and reveals what is hidden bringing conviction and repentance now we know the holy spirit uh, uh causes brings conviction and that conviction turns us to repentance so his presence is like light in the sense that he is able to bring light to the darkest areas of our life and minister to us in that way right so first one he's like fire second he's like light his presence is like rain uh you know brings refreshing uh brings fruitfulness now, remember we talked about the latter rain and how important it is because the latter rain it's is when you know you know okay the harvest is ready right only after the latter rain the harvest is ready so rain brings um uh, refreshing brings fruitfulness right and his presence is uh like a heavy weighty glory uh, overwhelming us with his goodness and mercies if you remember some of the uh revivals that we studied uh the revival in uh toronto uh, uh you know what happened was they were uh they were overwhelmed by the goodness of god say god you are a good god and uh, it was it was something unusual right it was uh, bible teaches us god is a good god but when his presence when the holy spirit uh you know manifested his presence in in that place in toronto they they were suddenly you know uh, convicted or they were they had come to this understanding of hey god is a good god right and so they were there was tears of joy tears of uh, conviction and 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 people uh you know received that message in different ways and so his presence is brings is like brings goodness and mercy into our lives right then we see that his presence brings signs wonders and miracles uh that is something that we must all uh desire for right even um even you know where, wherever we are even in a small setting you may be you're ministering to a friend or even if you're serving in the church uh, remember that his presence causes signs wonders and miracles right it, it, it's nothing we, we it's just that it's a natural that we have to do right uh, so for example a couple of sundays back we were uh, you know we were praying for a uh, you know a uh, uh, a uh, young man i was praying for a young man in the church and uh, he was saying you know i'm going through this pain in my neck it's been many years and uh, please pray and uh, i said sure i'll pray and uh, it was nothing it was just a simple prayer i said god lord thank you for your presence thank you for your holy spirit uh, that brings healing right uh, and let the weight of your glory uh, cover this 
boy, even as he, you know, you know, even as he claims healing, even as he's praying for healing, let your presence heal him. It was just a simple prayer, right? There was no screaming, no shouting, uh, you know, no, uh, no doing any extraordinary thing. Just a simple prayer. And immediately he felt like a burning sensation. And he said, uh, uh, after the prayer, he said, uh, I felt hot near my neck. And he said, okay. And I said, okay, how do you feel? He said, it's getting better. So we prayed again, uh, prayed again and said, God, let your goodness, let your grace, your mercy. I just, just said whatever, uh, you know, I remember the, the presence of God just brings healing. So just regular prayer. And uh, by the end of it, he said, I'm, I'm healed. Uh, I don't feel any pain right now. And he came back uh, to uh, last Sunday and yesterday. Uh, he said, I haven't got any pain up to now. So so what am I trying to get at? You know, the, the presence of God can automatically cause signs, wonders, and miracles. Right? His presence is like a cloud leading us, covering us. Uh, uh, providing a promise for the future, right? Uh, his presence is like wind, right? Uh, lifting us higher, moving us to higher realms uh, of his presence, right? Uh, you know, wind is a wonderful feeling. Imagine on a hot day, uh, you know, you're just standing and sometimes we look for a tree right, to get some shade and, and suddenly you'll, if there is a breeze, Right? And those, the you know, the branches of the tree moves about. You feel a refreshing wind. Right? I, I I don't know if you've experienced that, but on a sunny day, uh, stand under a tree, and suddenly, if there's a breeze, suddenly your body feels refreshed. You feel energized because of that breeze. So the Holy Spirit is like that. He he refreshes. He he you know he. He, he he's, he's like he he lifts our spirit up, and and so uh, his presence is like the voice of the Lord that is mighty, providing direction and instruction. Right, uh, I know we've all learned this in the Holy Spirit class, but uh, we must understand the manifestation of the Spirit wherever we are. It can be different to different people. The Holy Spirit may, you know, choose to manifest his presence like fire to you. But to me, he may choose to, you know, uh, manifest his presence in, uh, like wind or like rain or the goodness of God or the grace of God. Right. Now, why are we learning this? Because when we as a church community or as a uh, as a church, as a whole, uh, when we are praying for revival, we are pursuing God. God, the Holy Spirit may reveal himself in different ways. Now, we are not to judge that. And we are not to say, uh, we should not come to a place and say, hey, how can he, you know, scream and shout? Uh, why is he running around like this? Or uh, why is this person, you know, always crying during prayer? Uh, maybe he's got a problem. So we are not to judge that. We must understand, we must have the bigger picture and understand that, hey, it is not about what we are doing. It is the presence of God touching people's life. And the Holy Spirit is deciding to manifest his presence in his own way. So we must be uh, open to that. Right? We, we started it in revival. People mocked, people ridiculed, people didn't understand. Uh, in some places, but in some other places, people understood. Okay? Uh, you know, in in, um, in the uh, Toronto revival that we studied as well, they were, uh, you know, they were so overwhelmed that they would fall on the ground and they were crying for days. Now, if we are, if we don't understand that, we may say, "Hey, why is this only crying? This person is only crying every time. Uh, is she?" Or is he, or is she, uh, you know, faking it? Or we must not do that. Right? We must not, um, uh, you know, try to you know, judge the other person because the Holy Spirit is doing the work, right? Uh, and so there will be varied reactions, varied responses to the presence of God. Remember that the Holy Spirit and uh, and God has the right to touch our spirit, our soul, and body. Right? Uh, 
uh, remember that, right? Because the Holy Spirit unites with our spirit, and He is He can use our spirit being, He can use our soul, He can use our body to minister to us, right? How is it at times, you know, we are maybe in church, we're listening to us we are, during the worship or during the word, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit may give you a word into your spirit. And you'll be like, hey, I remember reading this a couple of months back uh, and it's now making sense. What is that? That is the Holy Spirit speaking to our spirit. Right? So, so God has the authority. He has the right to touch our spirit soul and our body right uh, the the reactions may be varied right many a times you know uh, uh, we get prepared we go on stage for the worship prepare for the worship or we have to share the word many a times uh, you know uh, even before during the worship we get words of knowledge or a prophetic word uh, you know and and so it's God may give it to us through a word. God may give it to us through uh, a knowing, uh, you know, through the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is one of the gifts is the word of knowledge. Uh, so he may give it to us in different ways, each one of us, right? So we must be open to that as well, right? And do not bring condemnation or criticism uh, on, you know, on people who may be, you know, experiencing a, a different kind of manifestation of God's presence. Let it be, right? Uh, let us not be people who will criticize and condemn, but allow them, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to them in his own special way, right? Uh, 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 very rarely, uh, I'll give you this example, very rarely, uh, you know, uh, many great leaders and pastors have prayed over me. Now, very rarely have I, you know, uh, shaken and, you know, uh, started screaming and shouting and fallen off. It, it doesn't happen to me, right? Uh, but uh, I do receive whatever they are giving me. Uh, so it does not mean that when maybe that same minister is praying to somebody else and they may, you know, just begin to weep and cry and fall on the ground, it does not mean that, you know, hey, they are receiving what I'm not receiving. No, uh, I'm receiving it in a quieter way. Uh, because it's the Holy Spirit is, you know, revealing it to me that way. But the other person, the Holy Spirit is revealing in a different way. So we are not to criticize and condemn, right? Now, we looked at the fruit of revival. Uh, one of the, we looked at the characteristics of revival. And uh, the fruit of a revival is almost the same as the characteristic. Let's look at a few of them. An important aspect in revival, the fruit of revival is a greater revelation of who God is. We saw that. People began to understand that God is truly who he says he is. A greater revelation of his holiness, his righteousness, his power, his authority uh, is revealed into people's heart. Why do we say this? Now remember in the North American awakening that we studied, uh, you know, the churches were empty. There was no, all the churches were like, you know, the entire nation of America was going through depression and uh, moral and financial and all kinds of problems. They were in a complete decline. But as the revival came, what made people, where churches, there were only 10 or 12 people, what happened that all of a sudden there are thousands of people? What happened? No, not this person didn't go and preach to all these, uh, you know, cities and towns, do evangelistic meetings. Nothing they did. Right? But all of a sudden, when the revival started, thousands of people started coming to the church. What was it? It was a great revelation of who God is. People began to understand. Hey, I can't go on with my life this way. I need God. My life is full of sin. And this, these are things that I need to change. I need to go make things right with God. God is a holy God. God has created us. So there's this whole understanding, this whole revelation that they get. That is what made them go to church and go and, you know, uh, be part of those uh, revivals. All the revivals. We don't see people going and, you know, uh, 
distributing tracks and you know standing on the street corners and preaching doesn't happen didn't happen right it was only the spirit of god bringing a greater revelation of who god is there was a heightened revelation of spiritual truths and realities right people were you know in the sense that they they began to repent they began to realize that hey i need to change my life uh, i need to make things right uh, there are realities there's heaven there's hell there is there are things that god has called us to be uh, there's a spiritual truth involved uh, you know uh, and so there was this heightened revelation uh, and how did they get that through the teaching of the word right then third one an increased passion fervor and zeal in god's people towards spiritual things now we did see that and remember in almost all the revivals they would come and stand out of the church at 5 am so that they can finish the first service then get to work right that's because of the passion the zeal for god they wanted to know more of god uh, what about the layman's revival uh, in the afternoon one hour of prayer now they could have done anything else but they decided hey let's pray for one hour and that caused a revival why, why did that person Jer jeremiah landfire it was a zeal or a passion in his heart to say that hey we need to do something we need to pray uh, a passion for who god is right uh, uh, and, and so here's an important thing and many of many of us uh, i've read this in many books and i also try to apply it in my life because we should never lose passion for god right uh, you know, we we all are passionate about things right? maybe some of us are pas passionate about uh, instruments or some of us are passionate about travel uh, or or cars or bikes or you know anything when we are passionate about something we will be willing to go out of the line willing to go out of our comfort zone to you know to pursue that passion right for example if you want you're passionate about music right uh, if you're passionate about music and don't do anything about it we're not going to learn an instrument right learning an instrument involves sitting practicing dedication hard work it's not easy right you can't say okay i want to learn an instrument and just you know sit and you know do nothing about it no no we have to sit you know and prepare right uh, a lot of times you know people uh, uh, especially young people they come and say oh, how is it that you're playing like this on the stage uh, is it practice that's all if to practice uh, you know uh, and they say oh we practice but you know half an hour a day said it's not enough no but we have college okay finish your college finish your assignments do everything sit at night and practice uh, oh no we'll be tired ah then you need to be passionate about it to go the go out of your comfort zone i hope you're getting what i'm saying so uh when we are passionate for god we will be willing to step out of our comfort zone right uh, so always check our hearts uh, and i always tell this to our church folks as well people that i meet do not lose passion for god we may not know many things in the bible or we're still learning yes that's good but the moment you lose passion it you know it it starts to lose uh, that focus that interest to more more of god will go away and so we need to pray and ask god god give us a zeal a passion to know more of you right and that's what happened in the revivals they closed the shops they went and to the churches and began to pray coal miners closed their shops went to pray it was like a you know you could say it was like a lockdown the entire city was all the shops are closed and locked where's everyone everyone are sitting in the church a heightened passion for god and another fruit of revival is obviously an increased gathering of uh, souls uh, into god's kingdom many lives being touched many lives being added into god's kingdom an increase in supernatural manifestations uh, and signs and wonders uh, again that's a very important fruit of revival uh, 
that signs, wonders, and miracles followed. Uh, another important aspect of revival is, fruit of revival is transformation of societies. Societies have been transformed. We saw that in, in different revivals where, uh, you know, the lawyers had no work, the police had no work, uh, you know, uh, drinking and pubs and all these things were closed uh, because of the move of God. Uh, now, uh, this was in cities and towns. Now, one of the questions that may come up is, uh, uh, you know, one of them, we post, one of our e-learning students had uh, put a question saying, uh, but what about uh, cities like Bangalore and maybe, uh, you know, these metropolitan cities uh, in our nation and even different nations? What about them? We're praying for revival. Do you think that, you know, uh, God can move in such a way that the police won't have a work and, uh, you know, can, that people will turn to God in a, such a huge way, like, you know, uh, thousands of people coming together. Uh, my response was to that was, yes, God is able to do it. Uh, but he needs us to, you know, uh, God responds to hunger. So the more we are passionate, the more we are seeking God, the more... Uh, there's unity in the body of Christ. Only then we will see, um, you know, all of this happening, oh, a move of God transforming societies. One of the interesting things that I read uh, um, recently was with all this persecution towards Christianity coming in India, uh, we see that church denominations are coming together. And that's a wonderful thing. Right, so we are forgetting about our denominations. Okay, this denomination, the church, is coming together uh, to fight against these works of the enemy uh, and the persecution that is happening uh, towards Christianity. And so that is a good sign. If we continue this way, we continue praying together, having one vision, one focus to build God's kingdom. I'm sure God will do a great work among us. Right, whether persecution is there or no, uh, God will do a great work when we are united and we have a passion and zeal for God, right? Uh, there are a couple of risks in terms of uh, revival. It's always risky. Uh, leaders have to take the risk to be take that path, to pursue that path. The enemy may oppose it. Uh, people may oppose it. Uh, you know, people may be may not understand, you know, you may have uh, church folks who are 30, 40 years in the church, but they don't understand what God is doing in the now. So they say, no, no, when we were 20 years back, this is how the church was. Uh, so it's a risk. Uh, you should be willing to take that risk uh, to answer uh, critics and all of that. So it's very important, uh, uh, you know, to understand that, we need good leadership during revival, right? What if people think you're wrong and they stop coming to church? Big problem. What if you or your church, you know, get branded as fanatics? All oh, these people are, you know, only praying for revival and, uh, you know, and there's some people come, they're only crying the whole day. They're crying and praying, uh, you know, uh, where is the joy of the Lord and all of these things. People may, you know, question different ways. Right? Uh, what if, you know, the motives of a leader are questioned? Right? Uh, if we see the, uh, the even the revivals that happened previously, uh, some of the leaders were questioned. Remember the, the Jesus movement, right? The Jesus movement, they were, they were questioned, why are you going to these drug addicts and uh, all these people and trying to share the gospel? You just leave them alone. But just that couple, I forget their name, the, the couple that went to minister to them said, no, they need to know God as well. And so uh, so they were criticized. But what happened? The Jesus movement was a wonderful movement out of which came all the contemporary worship bands and worship songs. And uh, so it was a wonderful work of God as well. So uh, people may misunderstand as leaders. Uh, a lot of people get tired, tired of praying, tired of uh, you know, uh, just caring for people or uh, what if there's a burnout? Uh, that's another thing. 
A word of enthusiasm and passion for revival dies off. Or what if nothing happens even after two or three years of praying? So all these things may come up. And one of the uh, you know interesting questions that people have always asked me is, uh, and I've noticed it happens, is um, there's a couple of pastors that we always keep in touch. And one of them said, oh, Paul, I'm getting tired of ministry. I'm getting tired. It's a tiresome thing. You know, we are we are listening to everyone's prayer request, and you now some are saying I'm suicidal. Some are saying this is my problem. That is my problem. And then you go home. You have you have to look after your home and the needs of the home, and uh, it's just so overwhelming at times. Right? We don't deny it. Yet it's very important as leaders to take rest. Right. Remember, um, I forget his name. Uh, was that uh, Hudson Taylor? Yes, Hudson Taylor. He went in China. He was so full of zeal. Started the China Inland Mission. He did everything uh, he could. At a very young age, he kept working hard. He kept uh, pushing his boundaries, pushing his limits. And then came, a, you know, he had a nervous breakdown. He was completely burnt out. His health was deteriorated. His mental health was deteriorated. He lost his family. Uh, because of that, he went into depression, all kinds of things. So it's very important that, you know, even as we are pursuing revival, as we are, you know, uh, pursuing God, <clears throat> we are to take rest. Rest physically, rest mentally. Right? If you are in the leadership team, uh, remember to do that. Uh, remember, it's okay to take a break. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, uh, unholy to take a break. It's all right. If you've been serving in the whole year, uh, you've been serving, and you feel you you just want to get rest. It's all right. Take rest. It's biblical. It's good to take rest. You're taking care of what God has given you, right? So even during these revivals, as we pursue God, remember these things. People may question, people may ask you, what are your motives? You may get burnt out, you get tired, enthusiasm. All these things may come in the way, uh, but we are to be in wisdom. We are to understand and walk the right way. Right, uh, so we finished chapter seven. Uh, I won't go into chapter eight. What we'll do is we will, if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions, but uh, we'll pick up chapter eight from tomorrow onwards uh, and uh, what I want to do, uh, probably look at is uh, to complete the chapter the the entire portions uh, by the following week so it gives us time to study and prepare for your uh, final exams right uh, any questions any thoughts uh, anything that you'd like to share please feel free to uh, probably unmute or you can ask your questions on the chat Anything from the beginning to now, anything that you have, maybe questions or uh, something maybe in your mind that you want to ask, uh, or you want to share. Anything, go ahead. Yeah. Any questions? Nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, is it too much? Is it uh, is it something that is, you know, uh, uh, are you able to relate? Uh, yes, say. Go ahead. <clears throat> yes, Pastor. I was just um, still kind of um, sinking in everything you've been talking about, and um, I, I just what what just came to my mind, or what the spirit has just dropped in my mind while we were talking about, you know, people getting tired in ministry. Uh, it's just an encouragement for everyone, you know. Sometimes we could be praying for our city, you know, expecting change. Sometimes we could be praying that, you know, the pews in our churches, you know, will have more inflow of people and people will come to the revelation of God. We keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. And then we don't still see it. I, I think we should just take encouragement from all the things we've been learning that even though we don't see it now, on, understand that certainly we're sowing a seed and certainly that harvest will come. 
And even though we don't get to see it in our lifetime, wherever we are located in our different um, parts, of, in the different parts of the world, understand that the Father in heaven has seen our labor, and whatever reward you know is attached to the harvest will still come to us. So, I just want to encourage every one of us that we are not wasting our time. Keep praying for your city, keep praying for your church. The Lord, our Father, sees everything we're doing. And indeed, he will reward us greatly in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you, Thank, you, for, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Wonderful. Yes, uh, very important, right? Remember that, uh, you know, we're praying, we're praying. Uh, we spoke about this uh, last class also. We, we, we're continually praying. We may not see it. Eventually, we may feel, hey, you know, let's, let's, not, let's just stop praying. Or we may give up. Uh, but as he mentioned, it's, uh, you know, we may see it, we may not see the revival in our day. First uh, Corinthians chapter three talks about it so wonderfully. He says, uh, you know, Paul is putting into context the whole thing of uh, the judgment seat of Christ where we are standing and God will test everything by fire. So imagine you've put in so many hours of prayer and God is testing that by fire. It is a reward for you in heaven. Right? It is a reward that God is, you know, it's never a waste. God is never going to, you know, say discount all the prayers. Oh, you prayed, but it was not answered. So let's discount this. No, no, no. Uh, everything will be tested by fire. You'll be rewarded accordingly. Right? So be encouraged in that. Right? Uh, right? Anybody else would like to share your thoughts or any questions? Uh, Sir, can I share? Go ahead, Rupa. Uh, during the past few months before the uh, this uh, classes have started this semester, I had the privilege of uh, watching and uh, studying about the torch bearers, about all those people we are studying uh, who brought revival in their times. So. These classes have reinforced and made it very, very strong. And it is a great blessing, sir. Thank you. And really blessed and asking God what he wants us to do during this time. What, uh, what is the prayer he wants me to pray? And what does he want to accomplish in our generation? That is the prayer I'm asking God. And thank you. Praise God. Thank you for sharing, uh, Rupa. Yes, it's wonderful. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts, any questions? Maybe uh, I could encourage each one of us, um, you know, if you're in the leadership team uh, of your churches, uh, maybe your local church, or you, maybe you're already a pastor or a leader in the church, uh, pastoring a church, or uh, go ahead and you know begin to pray these, begin to add these points, right? Instill faith in your in your church members. Uh, instill words of encouragement. Teach them, uh, you know, about this that God has done this in the past. Uh, God can do it even in our days. So uh, very important uh, to encourage your church folks. Uh, put that as a point, a uh, prayer point. God, maybe it's just five or ten minutes. Uh, or during your fasting prayers, uh, Wednesday prayers, uh, the you know men's meeting, women's meeting. Go ahead and you know encourage each group to pray. So that way, every group is praying for the point of revival. So, right? Anybody else? Uh, anyone would like to share, or we can uh, just close in prayer as well. Right. So. Uh, we we'll close in prayer. We'll pick up from chapter 8 tomorrow. Uh, and uh, chapter 8 is the pursuit of revival. Uh, a lot of it is uh, maybe uh, 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 just reminders of what we have studied uh, from chapter 1. Uh, but we will pick up a few examples from the Old Testament as well and the New Testament uh, of how people pursued God and how God answered them. All right, let's close in prayer. Um, uh, Samuel, can you cl close us in prayer, please? Sure, Pastor. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, 
we come to your presence and we thank you. We are really grateful. We cannot live without thanking you. We thank you for including us in your family. We thank you for choosing us. We thank you for calling us to your purpose. And we thank you for equipping us. We thank you for this class. We thank you for Pastor Emmanuel, Pastor Paul. And uh, we thank you for his ministry, his teaching, uh, and this class on revivals. Uh, Lord, as we learn about, as we look into the lives of all uh, your chosen ones whom you've used and how you've used them to create revivals, we aspire and we ready ourselves uh, to be vessels for you, for your usage. Lord, sanctify us, prepare us, equip us uh, so that we can go out to the world and we can create revivals. We can be part of revivals. We can bring lives to you. We can touch lives and we can spread your love to this aching, hurting world. We can bring your healing, Lord. Bless each and every one of us in this class, Lord. As we learn and as we build ourselves, uh, be with us, teach us, guide us, uh, protect us. Um, and every, every area that concerns us, Lord, we keep it in your throne, in your presence. Uh, we dedicate ourselves and our lives to you. Um, and we pray that everything that we've learned will come into use. This and everything we ask in the name of Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Samuel. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day ahead. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.